Mild weather and less energy demand because of a slow economy will only temporarily disguise a looming energy disaster. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Certain headlines are reassuring. Thanks to seasonally warm weather, increased production, and some conservation, the U.S. and Europe may get through the winter without serious shortages for households or too much damage to energy-intense factories. Natural gas storage facilities are brimming. Natural gas tankers are sitting offshore Europe. Natural gas prices in the U.S. are down 40% from summer peaks. But no one should be under the illusion that we're not in serious energy trouble. A bout of bad weather would quickly deplete those reserves, especially in the northeastern U.S. In recent years, investment in expanding oil and gas production has withered down some 70%. Moreover, diesel will soon be in short supply. Egged on by environmentalists, governments have used regulations to throttle development and use of fossil fuels. They have massively subsidized renewables, primarily windmills and solar panels. Financial institutions and pension funds join the attacks. Hundreds of banks around the world have vowed to phase out financing for fossil fuels. Renowned technology and energy expert Mark Mills correctly points out that for a variety of reasons, primarily environmental and cost, renewables can't even remotely replace oil and gas. In the past 20 years, $5 trillion have been spent on alternative energy sources. Yet the global share of hydrocarbons for energy has dropped from 86% to 84%, a measly 2%. Globally, oil provides the energy for the transportation of 95% of products and people. Mills observes that output from existing wells declines about 6% a year. So a massive new investment in oil and gas is essential for future economic growth, especially in the area of high technology. Now to get this kind of investment requires the enactment of legal safeguards so that energy companies and investors needn't fear the rug being pulled out from under them since big production increases require long-term commitments. The folly of the current approach is epitomized by President Biden canceling the Keystone XL pipeline as soon as he took office, on which work had already commenced. Had it been completed, it would have produced almost as much oil as we now get from OPEC. Moreover, the President's recent attacks on the oil and gas industry threatening excess profits tax will also inhibit long-term investment. Now, fortunately, if Republicans get control of Congress, they may well pass a permitting bill that will remove Biden's arbitrary roadblocks for leasing, exploring, and developing oil and gas on federal lands. Such a bill should also increase a little bit areas for offshore drilling. Americans favor overwhelmingly more energy production, in no small part because it would meaningfully cut their own energy costs. Europe's education here may take a little longer, although many Greens there now acknowledge natural gas is a clean fuel, and it may hit Germany that more natural gas production is better than having to resort, as it is doing now, to reopening five highly polluting lignite coal plants. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.